We've been going through the ballot initiatives for all of these states that are BI states, and we have now made our way to the state of Georgia, the peach state. Let's bring it on home. Georgia has uh, four ballot measures that um, they had on the ballot for 2022, and all of theirs passed. Let's go ahead and get into Georgia. Always on my mind. <laughs> had to say that. Georgia voters do not have the right to place their initiatives on the ballot to pass and repeal state laws and amend the Georgia Constitution on their own. Voters only have the power to ratify into the Georgia Constitution what the legislature puts before them through what is called a legislative referred constitutional amendment, a.k.a. state legislature initiative. So the first one, Georgia Amendment 1, suspend compensation for assembly members and public officials indicted for a felony measure. This passed by 88.48%, where a yes vote supported suspending compensation for the following public officials while the individual is suspended from office for being indicted for a felony. Any member of the General Assembly, governor, lieutenant governor, secretary of state, attorney general, state school superintendent, commissioner of insurance, commissioner of agriculture, or commissioner of labor. In other words, if you fall into one of those categories and you are indicted for a felony, you will not receive compensation. It's basically what that one says. So that that's interesting. Roger Meadows left a note here. Look how much that passed by. There should have been an accompanying hell yeah as one of the options. Let's go to ballot measure number two. So Georgia Amendment 2, temporary, temporary property tax change for disaster areas measure. So this is probably what the third state that I've done so far that had property tax uh, measure for 2022. So here we go. A yes vote supported authorizing local governments to grant temporary tax relief with additional details to be defined in statute to properties that are damaged or destroyed due to a disaster and located within a nationally declared disaster area. This passed by 91.85%. That one's huge. Jesus. Now, the amendment was passed unanimously by both chambers of the Georgia State Legislature. So that one is, is huge. Um, I don't know anyone anymore that lives in a disaster area. I did have a friend that lived in a disaster area in Florida and they lost their home uh, not too long ago, actually. So there's supposed to be some other type of insurance that you can get with that if you live in a disaster area. Um, I'm not sure how it works in Georgia, but I know in Florida, that's that's another big thing because they have all the hurricanes and, and all that kind of stuff. But this one was, was important to note. So that one is that. And I think there's a video there for that one too that I can show, depending on how long the video is. But let's go to... <laughs> JB said, you. <laughs> All right, number three, Georgia referendum A, timber equipment exempt from property taxes measure. So here's another one for property taxes, where a yes vote supported exempting timber equipment from property taxes. Now this one passed, but this one was a little bit close. It passed by 59%. It says here, Andre with the Georgia Forestry Association says the 39 billion industry is made up of several small business owners that employ 140,000 workers in Georgia. The same tractor owned by a farmer pays no ad valorem taxes whatsoever. When it's owned by a forester, it pays ad valorem taxes. 
We just believe whether you're producing peanuts, peaches, cotton, or timber, that's all a part of the agriculture family, and we want to be treated the same. Jonathan Parker has been working in timber for 40 years for his machines. He pays between $25,000 and $35,000 a year in taxes. Damn, that's a lot. It doesn't seem like a lot, but our business is so marginal. So Roger Meadows put a comment here, ballot initiatives may not always be sexy, but they are often they often can be a necessity. So again, that one is timber equipment exempt from property taxes uh, measure. I don't know if any of you are familiar with timber. Let me know in the chat. Let me know in the chat. If any of you are from Georgia, let me know in the chat. And last but not least, Georgia referendum B, merged family owned farms and dairy and eggs tax exemption measure. This passed by 76.46%. This measure expanded certain property tax exemptions provided for agricultural equipment and certain farm products to allow any entity that is a merger of two or more family owned farms to qualify for the exemption and two to extend the exemption to include dairy products and eggs. The agricultural equipment exemption applies to farm tractors, combines and all other farm equipment except for motor vehicles that are owned or held under a lease purchase agreement by a family farm entity that are directly used for the production of farm products. Going into the election, the farm products exempt applied to livestock, crops, fruit, nut bearing trees, bushes, and plants, annual and perennial plants, Christmas trees and plants or trees grown in nurseries to be planted elsewhere. Family farm entities of, under the measure mean an entity that has derived 80% or more of its gross income from bona fide agricultural uses within this state within the year immediately preceding the year in which the exemption is sought. Such entities may be organized as a family corporation, a family partnership, a family general partnership, family limited partnership, family limited corporation, or a family limited liability company in which all interests are owned by one or more citizens that are related to each other within the fourth degree of civil reckoning. Who supported this? Governor Brian Kemp, Senator Larry Walker, Representative Robert Dickey, Representative Terry England, Representative John LaHood, and Representative Clay Perkle. Organizations include Georgia Agribusiness Council and Georgia Farm uh, Bureau. Let's see who opposed it. No one. So there you go. So that, in a nutshell, is Georgia. So I hope you guys are learning something when I, I do these ballot initiatives, when we break down each state, because as you can see, each state is different. So that's important to know. That's why it's hard for me to just do them in such a blanket way because each state has different rules.